Rue, I cannot tell you how excited we are to have you on the Frank DeCaro Show. Well, thank you very much, but I'm afraid I can't do this after all because, you know, Mel Brooks's movie is on right now, To Be or Not To Be, and I just have to go see it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I understand completely. Well, this was nice. Do and, and, you realize uh, what I'm giving up for you? I'm, <laughs> I, I, I'm glad. I hope we'll make it. you feel that it's worth your while when we're done with this, I'm telling you. Well, I'm you. missing the best half hour of the movie. That's um, all I can Oh, say. I'm sorry. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, timing has always been my, my forte. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, we'll call you back later. It's fine. Just call during the commercials, and we'll we'll do it all night, and it'll just work out. No, Great. wait a minute. Don't take me too okay. seriously. I'm <laughs> no, just kidding. Just kidding. Tell us what it's, you're going to do tomorrow on Hope and Faith. We're so excited to hear you're going to be on. Well, it's not at all like Blanche Devereaux. It's as different as night and day. <laughs> I don't well, know. I guess she was night, and this is day. I don't know. <laughs> but it's not uh, that kind of part at all. All. What is she like, this Sylvia person? She is a a con woman. She's a con woman who pretends to be a little helpless lady in a retirement home with a speech impediment who just is dying to see her sister in the nursing home down the road. And, oh, if only uh, Hope could help her. I mean, Faith. Faith's a dumb one. If only Faith <laughs> could help her, you know. And Faith says, well, that's just terrible. They won't let you out of here to go see your sister. I ought to break you out of here in my car. And she says, oh, that is just a marvelous idea. And, of course, she goes, and the next thing we know, they're driving into their driveway, and she's in the trunk of the car. <laughs> She breaks out, and they think that she just wants to go see her sister so badly. Well, really, they are a, they are a team when they get together. They they uh, they steal things. Yeah. Well, I wasn't she? That sounds like she was pulling a Sophia there and sneaking out of the 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 facility there. And and well, she is a bit ditzy, I must say. <laughs> but con artists are. Yeah. No, I want to ask you this: Why do you think? Why do so many of us love the Golden Girls as passionately as we do? I have finally found out. I asked the gay guy. You don't know anything about being gay. I know. Not a bit. No, our whole uh, we're, well, our show is. Town. There's a few of us in our listening audience. There are just a few a of few. them in town. <laughs> and I was down in the village one night, and I ran into this guy who was just like, oh, my God, it's you, it's you. And I said, listen, I've been wanting to ask this for a long time. Why does the gay community like Blanche so much? He said, well, isn't it obvious? We all want to be you. <laughs> and I thought... I'd never thought of that before because, you know, she was very um, free with her sexuality, very um, sexually oriented, and she didn't make any bones about it, and she didn't see anything wrong with it, and she was flamboyant and, you know, very um, out there. And, and I, she's, she had perky bosoms, as she liked to say, as well. Oh, you have been watching the show, <laughs> haven't you? Yes, they we wrote that in. I didn't write that. <laughs> well, she did. So it was good. I, you know, I, perky <laughs> bosoms. Yeah, she never made any um, apologies for not having a big bosom. Yeah. It never bothered her. That's the remarkable thing about her. She's so upbeat. But I know that the reason people love the show, I have finally, well, not finally, some time ago I tuned into why they love that show. It's because it is like sitting around a hearth, sitting around a fireplace with a family. We used to, I used to get letters. I don't know if the other women did. I used to get letters from girls. It was always girls who wanted to come and live with us. They really believed that we were a family. This was real. And they didn't have a happy home life. And they wanted to come among friends because those women are friends. They support each other. And they're always, no matter what trouble they get into, they're always a team. Right. I and mean, Sophia, perhaps not, because, yeah. you know, she was, she'd had that stroke and she just said anything she thought of. But the three of them, but she stuck in there. Of course, she was desperate to stick in there. She didn't <laughs> want to go back to Shady Pines. Exactly. But everybody else stuck together and they supported each other. And it was a war. And besides that, it's terribly funny. Oh, it's hilarious. But I think we, you know, we love the show because it was a non-traditional family. And I think that those women did what a lot of us as, as gay men and women did when we first, you get to a big city and you sort of make a new family out of your friends the way these four women did. Well. That's what the way I related to it, certainly. I, I, I certainly think that's a part of it. And yeah. I don't know, I, I've been trying to f kind of figure out why the black audience is so, is so enthusiastic. I have so many I mean, the, the, the black people are absolutely just much more demonstrative than anybody 
Well, no, I guess the gays and the blacks. <laughs> well, we're all the same. It's basically. The, the, and I've taught. Well, I see what you mean. You know, we're all basically. We're, we're gay, no, and also, and and gay men are secretly uh, want to be. Uh, we're large black women, no matter what we look like. We really are. We just we scream. You you know the you go girl thing and all that stuff. We we've all got that going on. As if I need to tell anyone, we are talking to Rue McClanahan. She is our dial and icon tonight. How are you like Blanche Devereaux? Well, here's a story I tell. People always say, are you really Blanche Devereaux? And I say, well, now let's just be serious for a minute. Look at the facts. Blanche Devereaux was a man-crazy, sex-starved, uh, flamboyant, glamorous, um, southern belle from Atlanta, Georgia. And I am not from Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> but no, not really. I'm, I'm, I'm really not that way. I was Miss Goody Two-Shoes all the way through school. And the fact that they started casting me as these sex symbols just amazed me. I thought, where does that come from? Yeah. You know, I was always, even Vivian was, was sexy. She was much more interested in sex than her husband was, if you remember. Yeah. Well, I think people, uh, well, casting directors had eyes. I think that's why they cast you that well, way. Well, there must be something about <laughs> me that I haven't caught on to yet. Yeah, that's, well, that's part of the charm, you that's know. It's the va 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 voom and you're, uh, you know, you're not. You you don't maybe don't even know how va 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 voom you you I are there. Played, <laughs> I simply played Blanche as a very optimistic, forward looking, upbeat, uh, optimistic woman who wouldn't really let anything get her down. Yeah. She didn't even let Sophia's barbed remarks get her down. She laughed at them. Right. When when she would say you know something really bad about what a slut I was, I'd say oh you funny woman. And I thought that was a really appropriate response. Yeah. I think, I, if I'm not mistaken, we when I, I have interviewed you before, but for print, for TV Guide, and, and uh, I, we, I remember, I think we talked about that because you said th- that the notion of that if you'd gotten upset at things that she said, it wouldn't have played right, that you really oh, had to... Oh, if I'd gotten upset? Oh, no. That w- well, I didn't realize I'd said that to you before. No, I just think that's fascinating. I mean, because I think we forget that. We, we d- we're so, there's a, such a loving relationship there between the two of them, even though it's not even her mom, you know. But She uh, never took anything in the wrong way. Yeah. Will in Ithaca, New York, you're on the Frank DeCaro Show. Go ahead. Uh, hi, both of you. I love you both. Um, I was wondering, Rue, you played on Mama's Family. For I while. did, indeed. And, you know, we don't hear much about that. It's always the Golden Girls, which I love, and Maud. But I was wondering, what do you, how do you feel about that show? And You know, the they... funny thing is, when I run into someone who says, well, yes, Maud was good and Golden Girls was good, but I love Mama's Family. <laughs> I'm always so surprised to hear someone say that. I said, you like Aunt Fran? You know, little <laughs> prim, proper uh, re, uh, uh, rest, uh, what do you uh, restricted sexually restricted and in, in every other way restricted Aunt Fran and, and then you know if they hadn't killed Aunt Fran off I wouldn't been uh, available to play Blanche so I'm kind of glad they had me choke on a I think it was a chicken bone <laughs> a fish bone I believe a fish bone <laughs> yes, that was the worst day I hated that I used to get up in the mornings to watch that and it just ruined the show. Oh, <laughs> aren't you a loyal, darling person? <laughs> but it's, I guess if we have you as Blanche, that's certainly better than anything. It was wonderful. I love you. Oh, bless your heart. Thank well, you. Well, Vincent. thanks a lot for your call. You have a good night, both of you. Take care. Good night. Oh, we've got one more call for you here. Where John in Los Angeles. You're okay. on with Rue McClanahan. Hi, Rue. Hello, my old stomping grounds. How is it out there? I'm great. Listen, I just want to tell you, I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, and moved out to Los Angeles 18 years ago. And for 18 years, my name's John, but everybody has called me Blanche. <laughs> <laughs> well, my darling. Then you must and I answer to Blanche more than I do my own name. So. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Now, so truck, drivers, better... truck drivers or pe- taxi drivers will call when I'm going across the street here in New York. They'll say, hiya, Blanche. <laughs> so that makes two of us. Well, you made a, made a real impact on a lot of people, and we love you. Is, wasn't I lucky? I've been yes. so lucky. I mean, that was just a break that anybody, any actor on earth would pray to have. And I've been so fortunate. Well... Thank you for you all. You know, when I was in grade school, I always wanted to be popular. That was what uh-huh. I wanted to be popular. <laughs> and you know what? I think I've made it. 